Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. I have got four delicious meal ideas to share with you. Uh, I've got some recipes and some, one is just kind of like a meal idea or suggestion without a full recipe, but you'll see it, let's get started. For dinner tonight, we're gonna be having some shepherd's pie or I know the ongoing deba debate on cottage pie, shepherd's pie, we're using ground beef. You're welcome to call it what you will. I will have the original recipe linked down in the description box below. I am probably gonna be cutting it in about half because I don't want a huge thing of it. Um, I don't mind leftovers. I don't wanna eat it all week. So I got started here by heating up the pan, obviously. Put in some olive oil and I've got about half of an onion that I'm just gonna cook for a couple minutes and then we'll add in some ground beef. Okay, these are making me cry. Um, while that's getting started, um, I have a little bit of mashed potatoes left in the fridge, but um, I need a little bit more, so I'm gonna cut up some more potatoes and get them boiling, and then I'll come back to this. All right, now we're gonna add in one pound of ground beef. All right, while our beef is cooking, we're gonna add in some seasonings. So I'm cutting this in half, but the recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of thyme, so I'm about doing three quarters there. Half a teaspoon of salt, or like the recipe says, one teaspoon of salt. I keep forgetting if I'm saying what the recipe says versus what I'm doing. Recipe, one teaspoon of rosemary. I'm gonna do half a teaspoon. And then parsley calls for two teaspoons, so I would do one. And I'm actually really running low on that. That was on my list and forgot. Last time I did my big grocery shopping and if you see my hauls, I've been trying to only go grocery shopping once every two weeks. So we'll make that work for now. And then you can also add in black pepper if you like that. I feel like I say it all the time, but I don't care for black pepper, so I don't tend to cook with it. All right, let's hope you can hear me. I got my potatoes boiling right here, and this is sizzling. My beef is cooked, so I'm gonna put in some garlic, and we're just going to cook that for about one minute. All right, now we're gonna add in a third, well, it calls for a third a cup of flour. I'm doing a half of a third a cup. <laughs> and then about an eighth a cup of ketchup. Just going to eyeball that. And it calls for two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, so I'm just doing one. All right, so we're just gonna cook this for about one minute here. And then it's supposed to add in some beef broth, and it only needs one cup, because I'm cutting this in half. And I have some that I have frozen in the, free, uh, obviously in the freezer, um, that was like leftover from something else. So it's still a little frozen. Uh, I took it out to thaw, but it's not fully thawed. So I'm just going to let this sit here for a minute. All right, so now I'm adding in my vegetables and the recipe calls for basically three cups total of frozen veggies. I have um, carrots that are not frozen, but I cut them up super tiny so that they would um, just cook faster because the raw vegetables usually take longer. And I did more like two cups, so I didn't quite do half, but I always say we like our veggies. And I just chose to do carrots, corn, and green beans. Sorry, I just realized the vent was still on and it makes it hard for you to, to hear me. And you're supposed to let this simmer for about four to five minutes, um, stirring occasionally. We're just wanting to start the cooking of the veggies. They will cook more in the oven. And I'm gonna do a quick cleanup of my counter and make the rest of these mashed potatoes here. Whoops, I just about dropped you. I got some mash, or some potatoes. I've got some potatoes here that need to be turned into mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna do those really quick while this finishes cooking. All right, I'm gonna hope this size dish is big enough. We're gonna take our beef and vegetable mixture and put that in this pan that I did grease. The recipe that I will have linked for you does have a mashed potato recipe in it if you're looking for like a specific recipe. I was just kind of winging it, doing what I normally do for mashed potatoes, but if you're not a winging it kind of person, you can follow recipes instead of just using them as a guide, which is what I do. All right, now we're going to spread our mashed potatoes on top. Now we're going to sprinkle with a little paprika or a lot of paprika, however you wanna do it. It's so pretty. And then we're gonna cover with some shredded cheese. And then the recipe says to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. I don't know if mine will take that long because I'm not doing as much, but on the other hand, um, it's kind of a deeper dish. 
so it might take that long but let's get this up in the oven and find out all right so here it is out of the oven it was a close call with the size dish i used it started bubbling up a little bit but no overspill at all so that is our dinner for tonight I didn't wait for it to cool before I started serving it, so it kind of all mixed together, but it looks good and smells good. Time to eat. I'm gonna begin prepping our chicken for tonight's dinner and tomorrow's dinner. And um, I just have one package of chicken in here. And obviously you're just gonna do based on how much you need and how many people you need to feed. I've got it in a greased, a greased dish. And I'm just spraying it with a little bit of olive oil and we're gonna season it with some salt, garlic powder and onion powder, cook it at 400 degrees and I will flip it halfway in between. I'm gonna try to do like 10 to 15 minutes and then flip it. I think that'll be enough. Um, but tonight we're gonna have some chicken nachos. I'm not totally sure what kind yet. I'm gonna just kind of wait till later to decide. Um, but I know I'm gonna need some chicken for it and we've got plans for tonight and I want something quick and easy for when we come back. So I figure I'll prep the chicken and while I'm at it, prep the chicken for tomorrow night. And I'm gonna also prep all the veggies for the nachos. We do nachos like once a week almost and of all different kinds with all different meats, but it's super easy and it's very delicious. So I'm gonna get this chicken in the oven. I feel like I share this all the time, but I'm just showing you how we assemble our nachos. I like to do them on a cookie sheet because it makes for easy cleanup. We just eat right off of this. Um, that may not work depending on your family, but it works great for us. I'm just going to spray the foil. This cookie sheet is a little bit bigger than what I need, but um, so I'm not going to fill all the way up, but my smaller one is in use. And these are our preferred tortilla chips from Aldi. All right, and I took my chicken from earlier. Um, it's already cut up into small pieces. I didn't want to quite do shredded chicken, but um, I did heat it up in the microwave, not fully, but just a little bit because this is not going to go in the oven for very long. So I just warmed it up for a few seconds. And then I'm going to put some hot sauce on it. You could also use some buffalo. We decided on like a buffalo ranch kind of nachos. So you're just going to season. You could also do a barbecue. That's really, really good. All right, we're just going to distribute that on our chips. I mean, this isn't like rocket science, but in case you've never done sheet pan nachos, I figured I would share with you. All right, now we're just going to top with some cheese. I like to use cheddar cheese. It's the one I use most of the time for most things. I always have it on hand. It's very versatile. And so I do try to make sure, you know, all the chips are covered and all that kind of thing. All right, and that's it for before the oven. We're gonna put these in at 400 degrees for 10 minutes and then we will finish them off. All right, now our nachos are sizzling. For the buffalo ranch, we're just gonna put a, some shredded lettuce. This is where you're gonna add your cold stuff. And that varies based on what kind of nachos we're having, but we're just gonna do some lettuce and some tomatoes. I will probably put heavier tomatoes on one side for my husband, because he likes them a little bit more than I do. I just like a touch. All right, and I pulled Jesse over um, for the, there's already hot sauce on there. Unless which you want to put more, on? this one. I'll put a little more. Okay. You want more? Uh, maybe a little more, I don't mind a little bit. And splish those splash. And then some ranch dressing is what we're gonna put on top. We're not gonna do sour cream because we got the ranch. Splish splash, I was taking a bath. All about a Saturday night. Part of the song you are, I can get copyrighted. Scrub a dub, I was scrubbing in the tub, thinking everything was all right. All right, well, there is our dinner for tonight. Very quick and easy. I feel like I say that every time, but that's kind of what I go for most of the time. And it's delicious. For tonight's dinner, we're going to be making a spaghetti squash Alfredo. And I have made it before, but it has been quite some time. So we're going to first start by cutting your spaghetti squash. I highly recommend having a pretty good knife for it. Um, it can be a little dangerous because it's got a pretty hard shell. All right, once you have it open, it's kind of like a pumpkin. Um, you're just gonna scoop out the seeds. I'm just gonna kind of score around the edges to make it a little bit easier. We're just gonna scoop out the seeds. And then I'm gonna lay them on a baking sheet um, that I did not spray yet. Hang on, 
I got a baking sheet lined with foil. I don't know how important it is to spray it, but I figure why not? Just mine as well. I'm also going to just pour some water on this pan. Um, I'm going to link a recipe below for like this whole recipe and it doesn't, my oven's ready. Um, it doesn't say to do this, but I prefer, I feel like my spaghetti squash comes out better when I do this. So I'm going to put this in the oven at 400 degrees. You're going to do it for 40. I think mine might take 60 minutes just because it is larger. Um, but you're going to do it until you can pierce a fork through the shell. You want a little bit of resistance from the shell, but not a lot. Um, and the shell is quite hard right now. Um, you don't want it too soft because you don't want the strings inside to be like mushy, mushy, but um, you're just going to do it until you can get a fork through this. So that's what we're going to do now. And then we'll come back and get everything else going. Now on the stove, we're going to make our cheese sauce. I've got two tablespoons of butter melted and about two tablespoons of flour. Now this is not part of the recipe. The flour isn't, um, but mine doesn't usually get as creamy as I would like. It might be because I use almond milk instead of like 2% milk, but whoops, I know it's not gonna hurt to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and whisk in the flour and then we're going to add in three quarters cup of milk. I'm gonna add that kind of slowly um, just to make sure we don't have any clumps. Also, my spaghetti squash is done. I pulled it out of the oven. That's just water that burnt, I guess. The juice is there that burnt um, on the side there. And I flipped them over to let them start to cool because it's very hot and I need to begin to um, kind of pull the spaghetti squash, sp uh, spaghetti squash strings, that is a mouthful, away. Now, the way these original recipe works is you would put everything right here in the shell, but I'm gonna move mine to a casserole dish. Just, I don't know, I feel like it does better for leftovers and I know we are going to have leftovers, so that's how I'm going to do it. And I may not even use the whole spaghetti squash just because there's so much of it, um, and then just save the rest of it for, I don't know, I'll do something else with it in a, you know, in a coming day um, for dinner. So that's my plan. So we're just going to whisk this until our uh, milk warms up just a little bit and making sure we don't have any clumps in there from the flour. And also I have my chicken that I cooked yesterday. I did warm this up just a little bit in the microwave, um, but yesterday I made this along with the chicken for yesterday's dinner. Um, I just baked it, it doesn't matter. It just says one large chicken breast um, cooked and cubed. And then about two cups of fresh broccoli. I did not have fr fresh broccoli, so I used frozen and just cooked it and I tried to cook it just a little bit under what um, it needed to be because we're gonna throw this all back in the oven. Now I have one teaspoon each of basil, oregano, and parsley. We're going to mix that in along with about two cups of shredded cheese and I'm gonna be using some cheddar. And you're just going to want to mix this and whisk this until all of our cheese is melted. In the meantime, I'm going to pull apart our spaghetti squash and it's kind of hard to do with just one hand, but you see, as you pull it apart like this, you just kind of get those strands. Um, and so I'm gonna pull that apart and fill up this, I think it's an eight, uh, eight by eight or nine by nine, I think is what I'm gonna do. Cause like I said, I'm not gonna use all of the spaghetti squash. All right, so I have my spaghetti squash in a baked or a <laughs> greased baking dish, and I'm just gonna add my broccoli and chicken evenly throughout. Like I said, I didn't wanna use all my spaghetti squash cause I felt like it was a little bit of a bigger one and I wanted to make sure my ratios on everything were good. And that looks like it's gonna be a good ratio. Now we're gonna add our cheese sauce on top. All right, and although it is not in the uh, recipe, I'm going to put on some um, grated Parmesan cheese on top, just because, I don't know, Parmesan cheese goes well with this. <laughs> For the longest time, I did not like spaghetti squash, and I certainly didn't like it as a pasta substitute. And although I'd say it's not a true pasta substitute, I mean, I like pasta. It is good with pasta-like sauces, so I'm, I'm a fan. All right, we're gonna take this and put this in the oven for just a few minutes, maybe, I don't know, five to seven minutes just to get everything heated all together. But that spaghetti squash is still pretty hot, kind of hard to hold this on the bottom, so it shouldn't take long. All right, and there it is. And as I may have forgotten to mention, actually, this is a listed as like a healthy Alfredo, so obviously it's not going to be the same. It doesn't have the heavy cream and all of that, but it is delicious and we really like this. We've had it 
quite a few times and I highly recommend it. All right, so with tonight's dinner, we're gonna be having some sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna get those started first because they're gonna take a little while and then we will get started on the rest of dinner. Um, I wish I just put these in the crock pot. That's so easy, but I did not. So I gave my sweet potatoes a nice scrub and dried them off best I could. And I'm just doing sweet, two sweet potatoes because that's all we need. But um, I have a greased pan. I did line it with foil as well, just to make it easier because the juices that sweet potatoes leak, I, there's like, I don't know, I, don't, I guess maybe the sugars in it, starches in it, whatever. Makes it a little messy. Anyways, poke some holes in it with a fork. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 425 for, I'm thinking 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm gonna get that going and then I'll be right back. All right, let's move on to our meatloaf. I'm gonna start out by greasing my loaf pan. So that's ready to go. I can't find the recipe I normally use and my husband is not a huge fan of like switching up the meatloaf. Like when I've, I've tried some, you know, fancier versions. He's like, he likes just the classic. So I'm gonna go off of memory, but I'm fairly confident. So I've got one pound of ground beef. I'm gonna add in um, maybe half a teaspoon of Italian. All right, my camera stopped recording. I'm not sure what I missed here. We've got one pound of meat and about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I'm doing this based on memory. I don't know when it stopped recording, so I feel like I need to say things over again. Um, we're going to add in some salt. My salt shaker is not super great, so I'm just gonna do it like this. Probably like a half a teaspoon of salt as well. I'm gonna add in some minced onion. Um, could also use onion powder. I'm gonna say I'm gonna do about a tablespoon, or maybe that was probably more like a half a tablespoon. Yeah, it's half a tablespoon of minced, dried minced onion. I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of minced garlic, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and maybe a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. And then we're gonna add in one egg. I'm gonna put my gloves on first. I do not like to touch, I mean, I don't mind touching like raw meat a little bit. I'm just like moving it, but mixing it and stuff and getting it stuck underneath my fingernails is just not something I can get behind. So we got one egg. We're gonna mix this all up. A lot of meatloaf recipes call for one and a half pounds of meat or two pounds. Um, so if you do that, you might just have to increase the seasoning a little bit. I don't think I need to add in like more egg, but my meat is still a little frozen in the center. <laughs> so I'm just trying to break that up with my hands here. You do not want to over mix your meatloaf. Just like with meatballs, you don't want to over mix them. You just want to get everything nice and combined. Fun additions to meatloaf is like some bacon, um, ranch powder, but like I said, my husband really just prefers it the basic and I enjoy that too. So it's not really worth it to add the other stuff, but I have tried them and I think they're good if you're into that kind of thing. This is a little bit of a smaller loaf because I only used a pound of meat, but I'm just going to spread it out evenly. And normally I would probably do this at 350, but because I have the sweet potatoes in there at 425, I'm gonna put this in at 425 I'm just going to keep my eye on it because I'm thinking it's normally it would take like an hour. I'm thinking it's going to take more like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and when it's close to the end, we'll make some sauce to put on top. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make the sauce for the meatloaf. I don't have measurements for this, but you can do it kind of to taste. I'm going to do ketchup. I'm probably going to need to open up another one. I always like to make enough sauce to put on top of the meatloaf, but then also a little extra for dipping. I'm gonna put a little bit of a mustard. I forgot that I sometimes would add that into the meatloaf. So I'm just gonna add, wow, that was great. Just that liquid, delightful. I'm just gonna add a little bit in here. I also wanna add just a little bit of sriracha for just a little bit of a kick. I'm like really worried I'm gonna be like splattering stuff. <laughs> I have my hand up, it's like a guard. And then I'm also gonna add in some brown sugar, probably a couple tablespoons, because I've got quite a bit of ketchup in that bowl. And we're just gonna mix that together. Just taste that and see what I think. I think I want a little bit more brown sugar. It's a little bit more tangy than I want. I like a little bit sweeter. That's better. I'm pretty sure we're getting close 
on the sweet potatoes and the meatloaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and steam up a bag of green beans. I do like to do mine on the stove, but I'm going to do that now. All right, so I think our meatloaf's getting close. I'm going to drain out some of this fat. There's not a lot because I have pretty lean beef and I don't really know a better way to do this than to like spoon it out. <laughs> I don't want to pour it because I don't want it dripping out the side, but I might have to. All right. Trying to do this on camera. It's really not that much. My meatloaf looks so tiny. But it is a pound of meat, which is definitely going to be plenty. Now I'm just going to spoon some of this sauce on top. I will heat the rest of the sauce up just so that it's warm for dipping. But for this, it doesn't matter because we're just gonna pop it back in the oven for probably 10 to 15 minutes. I gotta check on the sweet potatoes as well. I'm gonna guess that the sweet potatoes are done. Yes, they're done. So they're very hot. I'm gonna set these to the side and I'll probably just leave the meatloaf in for another few minutes until the green beans are done and then we'll be ready to eat. All right, we got our meatloaf, green beans, and then I just cut open the sweet potato and put a little bit of butter and some brown sugar in it. And this is dinner for tonight. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.